morning. Um, I'm going to begin a new series of videos uh, concerning the, the building of a regulator clock. Um, I've, I've uh, built several shop built um, clocks in the past and um, this is one that uh, that I have been working on for some time. Um, it's been sitting on the shelf for the last year or two um, while I've been working on the hand shaper but now I've decided since the hand shaper is pretty well complete that um, I'm going to revive this project. Um, the clock itself looks pretty pretty bad. It's mostly built from uh, brass but um, the brass is uh, all tarnished and dirty and uh, so I'm gonna have to completely disassemble what I've done try to get it cleaned up and try to figure out where I'm at on this project um, so I, I, I've after several years I've I've lost track of, of where I'm even at but um, uh, I think that I <laughs> I have a long way to go um, so um, I thought well I'll completely disassemble it and um, run the parts that I can through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and the, the big brass uh, main plates I'll have to clean by hand and try to polish things so um, while I'm talking about this I've stood the book up in the background I bought this book um, uh, some time back and um, it it is a it's a very good book explaining how to build I think two different types of regulator clocks and for some reason I've chosen this one uh, I don't remember exactly why but uh, basically both clocks are very similar to each other so it, it didn't really matter um, I think the this is a highly precise clock once it's built and running and um, and I've done quite a bit of work on it um, actually I think I've got the gear train complete you know um, and uh, but the, the hard part is yet to come so uh, I built a, a place to mount it and um, I can see I did that I, I don't have any way to attach it to the mount yet so I'm gonna have to get that done maybe that was the next step in the process I'm not sure I think probably I have all the materials on hand to finish building it so probably there's not much left to purchase it's just a lot of work uh, that needs to be done so this is this is going to be the beginning uh, the book is called regulator clock construction and it's by uh, Peter Hyman um, and I'll I'll zoom in on the name so you can see that and um, I'll zoom in on the clock because it's in terrible condition it just I, I can't believe it's gotten this this tarnished you know in that this short of time I actually didn't protect it that's my problem I just had a rag over it and sitting up on a dirty shelf in the shop so that's my fault so let me um, let me zoom in on the name here so you can see that so you can see Peter Hyman H-E-I M-A-N-N -N, uh, is the name of the author and um, like I say it's a it's a very thorough book it um, takes you through all the steps and like I say I I do have some clock building experience in the past I've, I've built several clocks from scratch so uh, that said you know I'm not I'm not a newcomer to building clocks and also I've repaired a number of different kinds of clocks so um, not my business it's just a hobby but it's something I did for a while and um, I think I think uh, it might be interesting um, I'm not going to go through all the machining processes and everything but I am going to uh, maybe have several parts of this video and also I probably um, I'll try to post some uh, a link to some photographs that I took in the beginning of this uh, project to uh, walk you through some of the different steps uh, photographically so you can see um, what I did to get to this point 
And I'm not sure how long I've worked on this clock. It, I may have worked on it for, um, I don't know, I could have worked on it for four, five, or six months. It, um, of course, I'm not working full-time, just part-time on it. So uh, let me see if I can um, point out a couple of things here without getting in the way. Um, this is the main clock. There's two, there's two main plates to it. Let me turn the viewer around so I can see. There's two main plates and a third plate back here. Um, so it does, it is a pendulum clock. So eventually it will have a pendulum and it will have some, some weights that run it. Um, and you can see by this, this one um, part here that this, this side is really tarnished then the brass on this side is bright so it, this was the I guess the tarnished part was on top I don't know but it's pretty dirty and I the ultrasonic cleaner will probably clean most of this brass up uh, these plates these plates are pretty good size uh, they're they're uh, at least eight inch thick brass and this is uh, eight inches I think they're eight by eight yeah, eight by eight and a half or something. So these are pretty good sized plates. This is pretty heavy at this point. And um, th this is the book. And I'm I'm not going to go into detail, but the book has got a lot of a lot of detail in it, a lot of information, and it takes you through the building of this clock. And actually, it's I would highly recommend this book uh, if if you're planning on trying to build a regulator clock. So uh, that's. That said, uh, this, this is just a L-shaped wooden structure that I built to hold the clock temporarily. And my thinking was, in the end, I will uh, put some kind of uh, hole through here to, and, and attach this whole thing to um, uh, something else that's larger uh, so I can actually use it as a temporary testing base. So... That's my plan. Uh, this this is the actual uh, uh, back part of the clock that mounts to the case, and um, the clock actually sits on this. That's where the clock sits. Let me zoom you in on the clock a little bit. The um, just to give you an idea, uh, you can't. It, this kind of clock is really hard to see what's going on because. Um, the, the plates are fairly close together and you, you, it's hard to see the gear train and so forth. But let me, um, let me move you in a little bit on that. If I remember right, the gear train is complete. So I can probably move it. Um, and if I remember right, the, the gears actually are just a friction fit onto the arbors. And um, yeah, you can, you can actually... You can actually move the clock. You can actually move the gear train. It all feels really smooth, and you can see the the main the main gear here turning. Okay, so that's all complete. I think these I think the gears and pinions and and so forth are just friction fit or loose fit onto the arbors, so they haven't been planted there yet. And actually, at this point, I was going to mark them and plant them permanently. Um, I think that was the what I planned to do, but I think at this point I'm going to have to uh, disassemble the whole thing, clean it up, reassemble it, and it does. It is a little bit of work um, to do that, and there are a bunch of um, somewhere in my bag of tricks. I have a um, a uh, all the all the end caps for the arbors. I think they're all machined, and I need to. Um, I need to put those in place next. I think that's another thing that I was planning to do. So that's where I'm at on the project, sort of. It's just a very quick overview, I know, but if uh, I'll try to make this series of videos really short. And um, so as I go along, you, you'll get a better idea of what's going on. I see uh, there are some there are some actual ball bearings um, in this project that are mounted uh, to some of the shafts, so you'll see those there. When I, once I get it all disassembled, I'll lay it all out 
and um, before I, after I get it cleaned up, it'll all be laid out, and then we'll take a look at what we're going to do to get it all back together uh, at this point. Uh, there's a number of parts that that hold these plates uh, together, so I'm not sure if those are numbered or not, but I may have numbered them with a with a, a prick punch or something, so I can get everything back in the same place that that uh, that is supposed to be. Uh, most of the parts are similar in nature, so maybe maybe that doesn't really matter. All the pillars. They're not real fancy. You can turn, you can make the pillars uh, however you want to make them. I didn't make them real fancy. They just basically are a turned piece of brass with sort of an indentation into them. So any any further work would have required some making some special cutters to and do some scroll work on them or something like that. But basically, this clock movement in the end is is in a cabinet. So you you, you don't see the clock movement. You basically see the dial in the hands and and so forth. So um, and the clock cabinet. Um, so uh, it's 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 mostly the interior part of the clock is mostly functional um, to say that. So it's not it's not built as a as a showpiece, but it is built to be a highly precise mechanism. So it should keep very accurate time in the end. And um, if you look up any information on regulator clocks, you'll find out that they're highly, highly sensitive and, and very precise if built correctly. So um, I did, uh, I have in the past made my own cutters to cut all the teeth on, on gears. In this case, um, all, the, all the wheels have been cut with a, um, a factory built um, cutter. Uh, I think. For the most part, and I think they're basically all, most all have the same uh, tooth design. So um, I think that basically I had one main cutter that I used to to cut all the teeth with, and uh, whatever other ones that, that were just homemade cutters um, that I made myself. So you'll you'll see that once the clock is broken down and and. Um, You'll, you'll see what I had to do to, to make the wheels. The, the wheels I on this clock, I don't remember if I need to cross all these wheels out or not. I think they're just all solid brass, so I don't think that, uh, that there's crossing out to do on all the wheels. So, but I, but I don't remember. I'll have to get into the book and see what, what the uh, overall plan uh, was. So anyway, that gives you a little bit of o overview. Um, let me let me place the the movement, the clock movement, which I don't know how much it weighs, but it's pretty heavy right now. And um, basically, it sits on here. And um, these these two pillars here line up with these these um, threaded rods and, and knurled piece here and this tie this hooks the movement to this to this unit and then this unit is is um, uh, amounted to the case so that's that gives you a basic idea of what's going on um, hopefully I was in the picture there so anyway I, that's what's going on with this and this will be a beginning video just a quick overview and then um, we'll proceed from there I'm going to dig out the ultrasonic cleaner today and try to get this thing disassembled and cleaned up and get all the parts laid out and maybe I'll take some photographs of it to begin with to make sure that uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I know what I'm what I need to do to put it all back together it doesn't look like a whole lot of parts but it is there's quite a few parts to it and uh, they all go in different locations so I will say that all the arbors and stuff have been polished um, if I remember, I used a microscope actually to uh, to get you know high polished uh, pivots. So I think that everything that needs to be polished is highly polished, and uh, probably is going to require a little bit of work because I see some of the tool steel has um, as tarnished in, as 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 the brass has. So anyway, it's there. There's there is a lot of work to do, but. Um, 
that gives you an idea and uh, so we'll just we're going to proceed with this project and this will be a first um, of several parts um, as I as I move along trying to figure out where I left off okay I'll call off for now and post this video hopefully hopefully this will be interesting to somebody and um, maybe I can get this project completed it's uh, right now it seems a little bit overwhelming but once you get moving it it probably will it'll move along at a pretty good pace so I'll call off now thanks for watching talk to you later bye bye